Hey, how's it going? Welcome to A Book Oz Open Book, where we present to you the recordings of our interviews with amazing and inspiring people. In this episode, we have actress, writer, and True Blood star, fan favorite, Deborah Ann Wall. Deborah also played Karen Page in Daredevil, The Punisher, The Defenders, all Netflix Marvel shows. Deborah also created a TV web series, Relics and Rarities, where she plays the Dungeon Master. So, if you're into Dungeons and Dragons, it's really worth to check it out. In this interview, Deborah spoke with one of her editors, June Supenpuck, about what she's up to right now and a whole lot more. So, stay tuned, listen, and enjoy. Thank you. Oh, I'm really very excited and grateful because I have next to me my most beautiful, talented, <laughs> amazing friend, um, Deborah Ann Wall. And you guys know her from True Blood. True Blood. She played Jessica. Daredevil. She, Karen Page. Punisher. Punisher. And your own Few movies. And my your Dungeons own show. and Dragons show. <laughs> yes. Called Relics, Relics and, and Rarities. Rarities. Of which I've watched the taping, and... That's right, June came to check it out. I know, it was very delightful. And I, I introduced D&D to June. June had to play D&D with me for a little oh while. <laughs> and she she lured my husband, I who did. wasn't... It was not luring at all, because he was like, yes, he was I easy. Go. He was such an easy one Jace to, like, easy. get on board. Me, on the other hand, I was a little... I was scared, I gotta tell you. Yeah, because I didn't... There's a lot of rules in my mind, <laughs> and a lot of points and well, I, an important thing to remember too is you guys were my guinea pigs that was the first time ever that I was dungeon mastering so and I was using I a forget that yeah my very you were first such time. a natural well thanks but I was using a pre the pre-published adventure but I was customizing a lot and changing a lot and things like that so it was a little bit like between two worlds yeah. so I've definitely discovered for myself that I'm better if I do totally my own world um, mm. I'm much more out of the book and free and and uh, able to improvise and also now that I'm better at it I don't need my players to be as on top of the rules oh, yeah. so now when I play with new players I don't even tell them how to play Ooh. I just say this is who you are and you're gonna explore and if they go okay I, I want to break the door down then I'll say okay you're gonna roll that die there yeah. See, it's got 20 sides you roll that then we're gonna add that number there and then they catch on as they play Instead of feeling like they have to keep an encyclopedia of knowledge in their brain. Well, that's kind of cool because yeah. I felt like it's not that you made me feel like I had to have mm -hmm. an encyclopedia of knowledge. It's just that I've heard so it's much about it yeah. that at that point I had made all of these like preconceived notions in my <laughs> mind about what I was going to do. In <laughs> fact, I was highly disappointed that I couldn't wear a costume <laughs> to do our thing. You could. I could you have. You just would have been the only one. <laughs> right. So I severely did not understand <laughs> what we were doing. And I was like, okay, I'll say yes. And then when I got there, I was like, oh, there's a lot to this. Like, there's different <laughs> guys, there's numbers. I get panicky about math. It is some math. There is some math. Yeah. So it's I feel. It's just arithmetic. But <laughs> luckily. 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 <laughs> but even so, Jace makes fun of me because I'm like, let me get my calculator mm -hmm, out mm -hmm. to figure out like things that I could probably use my fingers for. <laughs> that's that's one of the joys yeah. of. Well, we can't all be good at all things. <laughs> I'm I'm I am good at math. But there are so many other things that are harder for me. And I think D&D is a good one for me because one thing I am not as good at is the socializing. Um. And the like, just, just conversing with people without an activity. So, Which is so shocking to me because <laughs> when you and I met, it was like, it was very smooth. Yeah. Well, we, we had some, again, we had something to do. We were working on a project together. That's true. So for me, I'm always better at socializing when there's when there's an activity that has to be done at the same time. So I can carry on a great conversation if I am also bowling or also <laughs> doing a fitting. So or, you're multitasker extraordinaire. Right. Or also playing D&D &D or a board game. But when it's just like sitting down at a table, unless I already know you yeah. and we have a history, I get very, very shy. I have the opposite problem. Mm. It's like if I'm doing an activity, it's like my brain cannot function Two things two that, yeah, because I'm 
trying to concentrate or maybe it's my competitive side. Mm. I have no idea what it is, but I have a more difficult time and a lot more anxiety. So yeah. when I am doing Dungeons and Dragons, I'm like, I don't have time to socialize with your, <laughs> your friends, Deb. And I can't talk to Jace right now because I need to figure out these rules. So I have the opposite. <laughs> well, see, what's funny though is I think that's what happens to me, except it works in my favor. Because mm-hmm. for me, it's like being drunk. So I don't drink. Right. So I never have that like loss of inhibition thing. Yeah. But when I'm focused on an activity, I don't have enough brain power to be self-conscious. Oh. So exactly what you're you're saying yourself out yeah i'm focused on the game and the rules and trying to figure out how to play and that loosens me up so that when social moments happen i can make a joke or i can be silly or i can ask a question versus when all of my attention is on socializing i second guess and i get self-conscious and i don't ask questions because i go oh what if that's the wrong way to say it or i'll offend them or whatever you know so i get very introverted Oh, so so yeah. was, was it like that all your life? Yes. You know? Okay. So I know that you and I have talked about this before, but I feel like it's important for people to understand that mm-hmm. just because you're an, a beautiful actress on a red carpet mm-hmm. does not necessarily mean that the confidence chip is always with you. <laughs> no. And you were born with it. No. So can you tell the audience a little bit about your experience with like yeah. confidence? With confidence. Um, still, still having experiences with confidence. Aren't we all? Um, you know, in many ways, too, when you're on a red carpet, it means that, you know, everyone is looking at you and everyone is judging you and everyone, even with social media today, I think we're all getting a little bit of a, a sense of that. Yeah. That when you're on display, um, you know, it, it just has this this way of kind of making you, again, like second guess and become really self-conscious about mm-hmm. yourself. And I think in a lot of ways, less brave because we don't want to put ourselves out there and then be slapped back, you know? Right. Um so yeah, I would say my whole life I was I was much braver when I was a kid. And I think a lot of my life has been how do I get back to being that kid? Yes, tapping into the inner child. Yeah, because you know, when I was like 11, 12 years old, which is like right before things got terrible. Oh, gosh. Um, for all of us, right? Yeah, like totally. we turned 12, 13. The hormones are cranked up to high. Right, well, like... you suddenly become self-aware. Mm. So you suddenly go, oh, people are looking at me when I do things right. and judging me and having thoughts. Whereas before that, you're not really concerned. You no, just do just what in your own world. fun, you yeah, know? Totally. Like someone has to tell you don't hit other people right. because <laughs> they won't like it because you don't, your brain literally doesn't know how to do that right. yet. It's like a primal function. Yeah. So, you know, there's the, the negative sides of it, like hitting and biting and all the th- you know, stages that kids go through that of you course. work on. But then there's the positive side of it, which means that like you sing at the top of your lungs and like, and you do dance like no one's looking because you don't know. Like kids at a wedding are yeah. the best. Oh my gosh. Because they have I no self-consciousness. They just go wild and they have so much fun. And it's so hard as an adult to find that kind of freedom and that kind of confidence. Well, that's the interesting thing is like, there's a whole bunch of memes about like babies and how they're kind of like little drunk adults, <laughs> you know, because yeah. that's literally, no, inhibitions. no, there's no <laughs> inhibitions whatsoever, just hanging out, sleeping on top of their food, yeah. like drooling all over the place. Yeah. And there's no judgment, like mm-hmm. self judgment. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the thing that, you know, as gosh, in the thirties yeah. now, it's like, you're still trying to attain that. You're like remembering, I feel like, a little bit of like, okay, what does it mean to naturally get to that place? Because I think a lot of people in their 20s end up, you know, you and I didn't drink, <laughs> don't drink, or <laughs> didn't go crazy, did not go yeah. crazy. Um, but I feel like a lot of people do, mm-hmm. and like in their 20s, it's like, yeah, let's do all the things, yeah. and like let's, let's find that inner kid through these different ways. Um, which are not necessarily the greatest or the healthiest, you know, but it's fun. Yeah, depending and then, on how you do it. Yeah. Right, exactly, <laughs> depending on how you do it. But, like, there is uh, now a sense of, like, oh, wow, I want to tap back into that yeah. and, like, really feel that again yeah. in, like, the most, like, natural, innocent kind of way, mm-hmm. you know? So is D&D kind of your way of tapping into that part of you? Definitely. D&D feels like, like, make believe the way I used to do it when I was a kid. Yeah. Uh, it's really free, but it's got some structure to it, which is good for the adult in me that needs some rules, you know, yes. to help keep things on track. Um, yeah, that, that's good. It's good for socializing for me. And it's, um, you know, it's interesting because I play make believe for a living. Right. As an actor. Um, 
and I, I think that has a lot to do with wanting to remain that 11 year old kid. Um, but there's something about that because all of the themes of that are very adult and it's, it's very much like um, make believe, but with grown up concepts and yeah. ideas. And so it's satisfying in a certain level, but it doesn't quite feel like play mm. in the same way that it did as a kid when you were a Ninja Turtle and running through the sewers, you know. Total. <laughs> you know? Yes. So the D&D fulfills a whole other spectrum of that, which is very much childlike. So when I play D&D, I don't do overly political worlds. Mm -hmm. It's very much, there, there, are, there are evils in the world and you are good adventurers and you are going to go and solve the problems. You know, like I have, I'm enough drained by our real life complex right. problems and thinking about those all day and trying to do what I can about that, that when I go to play and do d and I really do want it to be that childlike sense mm. of I am a hero and I things are not hopeless. I can save the day. I can complete the quest. I mean, I think you've just pitched the best form of escapism for kind of adults. Because yeah. this, I, I know though, it's it was a struggle for me personally <clears throat> not having, you know, the acting, right. you know, behind me and not actually accessing those parts of me. Because, you know, in costume designing and styling, it's mm -hmm. a different type of right. creativity and it's problem solving. It's imaginative. Right. But, but I'm yeah. not, like, creating stories yeah. like that because the stories are usually there already. The mm -hmm. characters, I can, you know, there's, there's bits and pieces of it. But I think for me to actively create my own story or even have a voice to choose my yeah. own path, that was super interesting for me because it like reflected back to me how much I have very little of that in mm. my life. And I mean, I'm thinking about it now and I'm like, <laughs> oh my God, it's so profound. It really showed me how it, it's like, wow, during that time when you introduced it to me, I was doing a bunch of commercials. Mm. I had 20 bosses telling me every day yeah. what I should choose creatively. And a huge part of the reason why like I wanted to leave that world and escape that world and it was like such a simple task seemingly mm. for the inner kid in me to be like okay now choose like what weapon you want to use <laughs> or like what path do you want right. to go through you know the the dark the, woods, the dark or woods the yeah, yeah. You, and I, I struggled yeah, like I was sweaty I really want to try again with you like we should we should do a couples game yeah or something like that where where we play we play again and and we take the pressure off you <laughs> and whatever pressure you were feeling right well yeah. I, I think it was really good though because it made me like realize psychologically all of the hoops and mm. all the layers that I have to keep myself confined in in my real life sure you know and then it, it's hard when you're doing that like creating a routine almost for mm -hmm. your brain mm -hmm. to like keep doing that and that's the way and it's like nobody's telling me what to do oh shoot like right. what does that mean and so now it's like exciting to be able <laughs> to be like oh yes I have the freedom this like morning, true freedom you woke up and you had to decide what you were going to do with your time right like whoa it's like what does that mean <laughs> there's no teachers there's no bosses I, it, and yeah. that's the thing. It's like, okay, so how creative can you go? So then when you were working on Relics and Rarities, like you were the DM. Yes. And you created all of the games? Yes. Yeah. I wrote the whole thing. Um, I, yeah, I created the world. Um, you know, we had an incredible team of production uh, crew uh, that... You know, I I made an infamous fifty page lookbook. Oh my gosh. <laughs> with descriptions and I am so not surprised <laughs> knowing you for as long as I've known you. Yes. They tease me about it every single time <laughs> I go to Geek and Sundry. They're like, Oh, it's a fifty page lookbook person. Um so uh yeah. So you know, I gave them a ton of inspiration, but I think what the main thing I learned uh, from that experience, because it was sort of my first time being the creator at the, at the beginning. You know, as yeah. an actor, you're a brick in the wall. Mm -hmm. Now, you want your brick to be colorful and interesting and strong and hold the wall together, but you don't have any say in what the wall looks like or mm -hmm. how it goes together or how they light it or sound it or anything. So, you know, that's, that's its own experience, and I very much enjoy that experience, but this was my first time designing the wall. And it was really exciting. And 
I, the, the thing that I discovered was that specificity and enthusiasm go such a long way. Mm. So if I, I, you know, I don't know anything about set design or lighting design or special effects or any of those things that the, that our crew was in charge of. Yeah. But if I could communicate specifically and with enthusiasm yeah. what I was going for, yeah. they took it and they ran with it and they did things with it that I could never have done myself or imagined it to be possible. Um, so when I walked on set for the first time, after basically giving them that 50 page booklet, answering any questions, yeah. you know, trying to give as much insight into what I was going for as I could, I was completely surprised as well as like, this is perfect. This is like, it's like someone crawled in my brain and took all of the imagery and all of the feelings that I wanted and somehow made it physical. Was um, I mean, was your 11 year old self walking oh, on yeah. set being like, oh, my dreams have it was, come true. It was crazy. It was really, it was really amazing. I, I have zero complaints about that collaboration. They were oh. so on point with it. Um, and then even in post, like I, I didn't, I didn't see cuts, I didn't go through edits, mm -hmm. I did nothing like that. That was all in the hands of our director and producers. But again, like because we had communicated so specifically what we were going for, I felt very free to just trust them. And they did these amazing things where there were just little sound effects they added. So yeah. if someone mimed throwing a glass on the ground, they did a little ksh of glass shattering. Oh, that's cool. And it's very subtle. And because I'm not big on telling an audience what to see or You're feel, right. yeah. but something like that is just a little way to go, wait, did I imagine that or did I actually hear it? Yeah. And it's a great little enhancement that just encourages them to hear the world as they're, as they're watching. Yeah. Because um, I think that's the beauty of like having these things unfold on camera mm -hmm. versus like when you're reading a book, mm -hmm. you know, because I, I know that you and I are avid readers yeah. and like every time we go into a world of some <laughs> sort, it's like, oh my gosh, look at all these possibilities. This is what the character looks like. Yep. And then it's quasi disappointing sometimes <laughs> when you see it in, room, sure. in the interpretation, the visual interpretation of sure. the movie and you're like, oh, that's not as like cool well, as Well, they'll I never thought. be able to, to beat your imagination, right? Our right. imaginations win every single time. Right. So the nice thing about D&D &D is it's simultaneous. So it's it's my imagination in the past meeting and collaborating with the imagination of our crew, meeting and collaborating with the imagination of our cast, yeah. which then meets and collaborates in real time with our audience who are seeing it happen as we're as we're creating it. You know, like I don't know how the story is going to go until right. we play it. <laughs> And you know, I have I know the beginning, middle, and end. I know the beats. Yeah. I know I know what monsters in that room, and that they will fight it if they go in there. <laughs> but I don't know how that battle's going to go. I don't know whether they're going to win or lose. Um, I don't know what they're going to take or find. I think that's the coolest part about being a dungeon master yeah. is being able to be like, okay, I've created this world, but I still have no idea necessarily. It's like there's the unpredictability is still there. It's for you. still there. Well, and the fun thing for me, and this is a little different than I think other. Dungeons and Dragons players, uh, a lot of Dungeons and Dragons players love the character work. So mm -hmm. they get very invested in their backstory and their and what their character looks like. Oh my like gosh, that would be like, me. Yeah. Like when I got deemed Phoenix Buttercup, I was super <laughs> freaking excited. And totally. I was like, yes, what am I wearing? I'm a ranger. Let's do this. I have a black Give hat. me an animal. <laughs> yes, I have a black panther. Um, so yeah, it's, it, a, lot of, a lot of people get very invested in that and that in part of the world. I am equally fascinated by my actual players. So June is as interesting to me as Phoenix. And I can't wait to see what decisions June is going to make when faced with this problem using the tools that Phoenix gives her. You oh, know? That is so lovely. It's really cool. Like I love seeing players light up with ideas. Yeah. And again, the character is just kind of a tool that we use to to display that and some people like I say they, they prefer to do more of a character driven story which is which is great but I, I really as a DM I, I thrive on seeing my players excel and shine and and show what their strengths are um, like Julia who's one of our players on relics so her strength is she's super brave and sassy like yeah. that's just who Julia is and when she plays Annabella, she brings that to it and she makes these decisions that everyone else in the party is like, what? I know. You How want dare to go you? talk That's to the witch? terrifying. You know? No, I watched that episode right? and I was like, what is she doing? She's so scary. <laughs> this is 
terrifying But it's for me. brilliant. Yeah. She just goes for it and she steps forward and I like to reward it because it's so bold. It's sure, a DM and I'm course. like, I make the rules. So yeah. hell yeah, <laughs> do it and roll. And if you're high enough, you win, you know, like great. Um, so, you know, I, I really, it's the same thing for me with acting. I don't believe that acting is all about the character. I think you have to bring yourself to it. Mm. Otherwise, one person would have done Lady Macbeth and that would be it. They would have found the ultimate way to do sure, it and we'd never course. do it again. But no, instead, we each come to it and we bring ourselves and we bring our own experiences. Um, and you want, I, w- I want to see every single person play Lady Macbeth because every single person is going to bring a unique angle to that. Um, so for me, the actor, the player, is as important in any role as the character is. I mean... What a beautiful way to describe your job because I feel like in a lot of conversations that I've had telling people, you know, I've worked in the industry, blah, blah, blah. And mm. then the first question is always like, oh, who have you worked with? Yeah. It's always like, okay, tell me, what, right. is there a real personality like this? Is, you know, <laughs> what is it like? And you know, what's great is that I know you and I'm like, yeah, she's freaking lovely. And <laughs> there's no complaints. She's just <laughs> down to earth. And wonderful and extremely talented and very connected to her work. Thanks, June. And I think that's important because I feel like, you know, a lot of times you're, as actors and talent, you're objectified Mm. in a way that kind of associates you with the character. Mm -hmm. And people come up to you, I'm assuming, and they're like, oh, you're Jessica, oh, you're Karen Mm -hmm. Page. And like, it's not you, you know, (laughs) like there's, it's like, you're no longer you, you're someone else. Well, it's interesting there. Yeah. I mean, I. I, I don't know. I don't experience that. I don't have like a, there's no one in my life that I would feel like I wanted to approach. I mean, there are people I admire, but I would never approach them, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so I don't, I don't, I don't have an experience or an idea of what that instinct is. Mm-hmm. Um, but it is interesting because they're, they're not really wanting to meet me. Right. They're wanting to meet the person who plays the character that right. they love. Right. Um, unless, I mean, maybe, I mean, maybe if, I suppose you could be a fan of a real person if you did enough research into like interviews or like listening to a podcast like this or something like yeah. that. But it's really hard to know someone you've never met. <laughs> well, I know. And I think that's the the wonderful thing and why like it was so, I, I mean, obviously we've been talking about collaborating forever yeah. Yeah. and ever and ever. Um, Deb and I have known each other since 2013. I had to look that up, by the way. Yeah, I wouldn't have been able to 2013. Tell you the I know the movie. Fitting. The project. <laughs> a fitting yeah. in my house. And then we bonded instantly because you saw Jace's graphic novels. And you were like, oh, my God. Your boyfriend <laughs> and my boyfriend have to be friends. <laughs> and then in my mind, I was like, can we be friends? <laughs> and they have to declutter together. <laughs> please. Please let and them they, declutter together and, spend and all of their toys and, and all the things. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Can they spend time together? Which is obviously now they have bonded. And yes, they have bonded. We've but all they bonded have not together. bonded the way that we have bonded. No. I would say our friendship has blossomed far more than the initial instinct about our boyfriend. I agree. <laughs> and which has included for all of you guys that don't realize this about us is that both Deb and I have a very serious side, and mm-hmm. I think we can talk about very serious <laughs> things. <laughs> issues we all drink issues tea. of the world, and we're drinking tea. <laughs> and <laughs> but also, we're both really goofy, yes. weird, and nerdy. Yes, and we appreciate that about each other. And what we've done during the duration of our friendship has been appreciation of movies, mm-hmm. and we've had slumber parties uh-huh. where we've worn pajamas. Mm-hmm. No makeup, hanging out, watching like our favorite series of movies. I think what was usually it? it's been scary movies. It has been okay. We've been so doing that's a lot been of my more. fault because no, I, it's not I your mean, fault. <laughs> I that keep, is my I keep favorite as well. Getting that I keep suggesting the same thing is really what the <laughs> and issue is. And it's October is. again, so we it will is. likely do that this month. <laughs> so the last time I think we watched Wreck It Ralph. That's true. Because that is my favorite movie. Okay. No, Wreck It Ralph one, one is my yes. favorite movie. Okay, we watched Wreck-It Ralph because I didn't watch it, and she was like, "Oh my God, you we have to I watch this." It was so cute, it's all and then friendship. I was like, "Meanwhile, <laughs> I'm watching it. I'm crying because yeah. it's so sweet." Yeah. And yes, I we we love our friendship, and we're like, "Let's watch a friendship movie." Friendship movie. <laughs> and then afterwards, we we're like, "Okay, now let's watch things get killed. <laughs> let's go watch The Descent. Yes. We're gonna watch what? What else? Oh, then you showed me the Poseidon." 
Oh, oh, Poseidon. Poseidon. Just right, right, Poseidon. right. The remake. The re. <laughs> so, extra super dorky thing about me. I love the remake of the Poseidon <laughs> Adventure. <laughs> Guys, this movie is so hilarious. It's not. It's and not a great. great. Movie. It's not a great movie. But, but. It is essentially a Dungeons and Dragons campaign. It really is. It totally in a movie. is. So it really appeals to me because it's a problem solving movie. It's, right. The boat is upside down. Everything is upside down. Water is filling, so you have to keep moving and you have to get across the ballroom, but it's upside down. And the piano is about to fall and you have to solve the problem. And I'm very intrigued by small cast movies where they're up against terrible odds and they have to solve problems. Well, so, like, I mean, yeah, that sounds pretty de. Dungeons it's very and Dragons Dungeons and Dragons ish. You know? It's it's a dungeon crawl. Poseidon is a dungeon crawl. I don't think anyone has ever thought of that. No, but it no, is. No, but it is. And but maybe that's why it made me sweaty. Aside from the fact <laughs> aside from the fact that I can't swim very ah. well and I didn't learn until college and I'm still terrified of the ocean. Mm. So the idea of being trapped that. in a boat is like <gasps> one of my worst fears aside from Why being stuck in an elevator movie? with people who are vomiting around me. <laughs> that would be my worst fear. Mm -hmm. But second closest would be an a something capsized like, yeah. ocean liner. <laughs> yeah. Which is why I would never do that. Right. <laughs> would you go on a cruise? You've I've been, been on a cruise. I've been on a cruise. I, uh, not for that reason. I'm not generally afraid of dying uh, in a, most situations. Um, Which is actually not a luxury that a lot of people yeah, have. Yeah, a lot of people really think about it a lot. I don't, I don't think about it that much. I feel like people who are attracted to scary movies are not necessarily f afraid of dying. That's Maybe. my theory. It's possible. But you like scary movies. I love scary movies. And, and you're I'm, afraid of dying on an ocean liner. That's the only place that I would okay. be afraid of dying. Okay. Otherwise, I'm like actually flying, pretty zen. Good, yeah, yeah, I'm very zen about death. Yeah. I think it's the Buddhist upbringing mm. in me that kind of is infiltrated. And then the Catholic part of like going to Catholic school really <laughs> messed that up real good. Wow, yeah. <laughs> but overall now, I would say that I'm not really yeah. afraid of dying. Okay. But yeah, ocean liner, not my favorite way sure. to go. For sure. So I, yeah, I don't, I don't love cruises for different reasons. <laughs> Just because you're stuck in a boat and there's not really much to do. No, that's true. Um, it's not particularly cultural usually, or you know, kind it's of, a booze cruise usually. Yeah, and I don't drink, <laughs> and I, I don't care that much about food or yeah. you know, like stuff in my face or anything like that. Um, so I don't know if there was like, if there was a, like a cruise with my friends and we were gonna play board games. Like, maybe that would be great. I don't know. I mean, the grandma within me would love to play shuffleboard. Yeah, just shuffleboard's like, fun. Or the kid in me would be like, yes, I would just spend my whole day on the cruise on the slide. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. That's true. If they have, like, a water park or something. But then also, maybe it takes you a cool place. Like, if it took you to see Alaska or, you know, they do those river cruises in Europe. Yeah. You know, you know like, That's I could true. see that where, like, you get to, get to go and see someplace really cool. But just the idea of, like, getting on a boat and it's just a big floating resort, I don't know that that... I'm cool to go to resorts on land. Yes, I would agree. I would join you there. Yeah. But if we were to go on a... I don't think we'd have a friendship cruise, I gotta say. Hmm. I don't think we'd do that. No, probably not. <laughs> but, okay, so back to the movies okay. that you enjoy. Yes. Share with me... Okay, you've named Wreck-It Ralph. I do love Wreck-It Ralph. Okay, what's another one that you love? Well, I mean, look... Anything Pixar. We just watched Coco the other night. And oh, I bawled my eyes bawled out. My eyes I out. love Coco so, so much. Sweet. And then there's this there's this extra feature on it where they tell the kid who did the voice for Miguel yes. that he got the part. <gasps> Cuz he was like the temporary voice for a while. No way. And and so they were just sort of using, you know, he was sort of hired to do the temporary voice, but they loved him so much. They so his mom clearly knew she's in the back and she's like all like choked up because she knows what's coming and they oh give him this gosh. present and he opens it and inside is a plaque that says you got the part and he <gasps> like falls down like laughing and crying oh, he's so happy and gosh. everyone comes out and claps for him and it's just the most precious moment and I'm like I'm so glad that's on tape because he'll be able to look at it for the rest of his life that's the sweetest thing you no know. I, I love that movie. I just, I think that's the thing about us is like when we're, whenever we get together, we're just like, let's talk about the great things in life. And we get like all misty eyed. It's, I mean, there's, there's so many, 
there are so many terrible things, so many things to be angry about and upset about. And yes, we should be angry and we should be upset and we should do things about it. But I also want to give equal time to the wonderful things like Coco, <laughs> <laughs> which is a truly wonderful no, movie. No, it really is. And I, and there's, it's an appropriate time to watch it yeah, as well. Yeah. Because obviously. Uh, just, I, I just, I, I really, I appreciate um, good storytelling. And uh, so that's, that that you know most Pixar movies are way up there for me, but like I said, I do. There's something about a small cast up against impossible odds. So, Alien, mm. one of my favorite movies. Mm-hmm. Um, g- you know, besides being a great horror movie, great movie. Period. Yeah. Um, incredible acting, um, incredible set design, and the the props design. They did just the right kind of amount of like uh, physical. I'm gonna say puppetry, but I guess that's yeah. what it was. Yeah. Um, and and effects and things to really make it. I mean, it looks better and scarier and more real than most CGI. I feel like it was it messed me up. Yeah. Like I used to look at the cover of it because my dad, I think, had the either the laser disc at that time. And it's that scary egg with the yeah, green light. Exactly. Coming out. Exactly. And I would be creeped out by it. When Tom Skerritt is in those like tunnels, yeah, and no. they're like, it's coming, he's like, no, um, thank you. Uh, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to get out of here. Like, and he's you can see him trying to keep it together. Yes. Ooh, but he does not get out of there. But that's the thing is like that. I feel like that whole movie was like a pressure chamber. It, it really is of anxiety. You're and just it's, like it's very subtle too. It's one monster. Right. That's it. Right. One monster. Okay. Oh. But here's the deal. I grew up with like a bunch of action movies. Right. And you know, kung fu movies. Arnold Schwarzenegger, Sylvester Stallone, Jean Claude mm-hmm. Van Damme, mm-hmm. Steven Seagal, like those were my Big strong men. other fathers. Right. <laughs> because my dad introduced me to all of them. Sure. And therefore, it was super cool for me to mm. watch Alien Aliens and right. whatever and see Sigourney Weaver being this like badass yeah. woman yeah. taking over and killing a bunch of aliens, which is super cool. Well, I love it is too, because in the first one, they paint her character as being a little bit of like that female stereotype or any stereotype of like two by the book, by the rules, you shouldn't have let him in, that's against quarantine, mm-hmm, and like mm-hmm. everyone else is like the compassionate person, and then she's right. I you know. You know? Like it flips it on its head, and you're like, man, if they'd only listened to her I and not <laughs> judged her, everyone would be alive, you know? And I think that's why I love aliens. Yeah. So much because it's the action version, yeah. of course, That's of true. it. Takes and it so to that next now level. I'm just, and then the little girl is involved, yeah, and you're just it. like, oh my gosh, yeah. I want, I want all of the, this. I watched it so many times. Yeah, so I, I mean, there. That's just. It was a great. It's a great series, um, and I always go back to. It. I think they're they're playing it at Fathom Events on the big screen <gasps> this month. We gotta um, go. We'll go. We'll, we'll go. go. We'll make that happen because other. I, I mean, on the big screen. I don't think I've ever seen it. Like blown up. No, I was too little of a kid. I think at that point it wasn't even, when when did, what year, do you remember what year it came out? I want to say like, uh, 80s. Okay, well then, obviously, we wouldn't have gotten the theaters, but, um, way too young for that. But, uh, uh, they might have been a reunion or something where they might have played it, but this, now they're they're doing one now. Oh, it's probably like 89. Or 79. I don't know. I, that's a big range. That is a huge range, but we know what we're going to go be, with the fact that we did yeah. not watch it in movie theater. We did not. <laughs> we know that. Okay, so that's one of the movies we should watch. Mm-hmm. I watch Hocus Pocus every year. Mm. I don't know if you know this about me. I do like I think I did know that about you. Hocus Pocus is a great movie, too. I don't know really what fun. it was about the movie. Strong Woman. Str- uh, yes. <laughs> and also, like, incredible nostalgia. And the boy is a virgin. Also... <laughs> As opposed to the yes. girl. Yes. <laughs> and there is a talking cat. Boy virgins for the win. And a talking black cat. Yes, exactly. So, of course, a part of my heart yeah. is always going to want to watch that every Halloween, as well as Night Before Christmas, mm-hmm. which is, mm-hmm. although some people say that that's a Christmas movie. It's both. It's, it's literally the point I know, of the movie. Which is why <laughs> it confused me, because Jason and his brother totally think that that's a Christmas movie right. in their minds. And hey. I'm like, and I know it's both, but in my mind, I always watch It'll it during Halloween. Movie. Halloween, yeah. Okay, so are there any, like, current, I guess, what are, what are some of the movies that you always watch to make yourself feel better? Is it Wreck-It Ralph? It could be Wreck-It Ralph, it could be Coco, it could be Inside Out. It's Pixar, generally, is like a a comfort zone for me. Um, 
I think sim- in a way similar to the D&D, even though there are complex themes, it is gen- generally about humanity in the end yeah. is a good thing. And if, if we're there for each other, you know, love, family, um, you know, belief in oneself, you know, those kinds of themes are very uplifting and wonderful and real. Yes, they are. Um, so, I, yeah, that tends to be what I gravitate to for, for comfort. Well, I think it's super important to have those <laughs> as, like, little escape hatches yeah. when you're like, oh, real life, grr, <laughs> grr, and, grr, life. grr, life. Uh, let me just escape and watch this for a second. And it always it always does turn it around because yeah. a lot of it is a mindset, too, yeah. where you're just like, oh, I'm stuck in the spiral of negative something. Yeah. And then if you just pop in a movie, it's like, oh, my gosh. Life is great. Well, and that, and that you you know the the good thing about the general story structure of all stories is that um, characters go through really tough times. They put them through the yeah, ringer, the and challenges. then they come out victorious at the end. So there's this lovely reminder that even if stuff's hard now, even if stuff is continually hard, there are going to be these victories. You're you're gonna get through it, especially if you keep your focus on the things that really matter. I think that's why we're friends, probably. Is because we do have a very, I mean, there's a lot of reasons, but I think the the optimism is like uncanny Yeah. (laughs) because both of us are just like, yes, there is good. There has to be. There has to be. Like, why not? Right? At this point, why not? And then obviously there are bad things too, but for the most part, you and I love to do the make-believe stuff and access that. And I mean, even... Even that's why, I think that's why it was so exciting for me to finally collaborate with you mm-hmm. and like work on the a book of, you know, editorial with you. No, because it was just... shoot was really cool. It, it was, was fun to really show up and be like, oh my God, I'm just doing this with June. I like, know, we're just buds hanging out and, and like, like making beautiful art. Her <laughs> shoot, you know? Yeah. I was very, it was very cool. And what was cool is that I feel like because I know you so well, this is not usually the thing that happens with like styling or costume mm-hmm. designing. It's like you don't really know the person as right, well. Right, so it's right. like you're accessing different parts of them that you're assuming and you're having <laughs> conversations, but it's like, no, no, I know. <laughs> I know what she likes. And what was cool is being able to say, okay, Deb, we're gonna we're gonna talk about the different <laughs> sides of Deb. We're gonna do one, your real everyday life. Right. And then one that is displaying one portion of your personality that the audience might not know. Right. And then a different one. So why don't you tell me about the different okay. types of Deb? Um, <laughs> boy. All right. So, you know, the, the, the normal everyday Deb, I think, is pr- appropriately the sort of least engaging of the three. But I think that, that that was actually something I think we kind of wanted to do on purpose or yes. I wanted to do on purpose yeah. because so much of, of what I do in my everyday life um, is like what we were talking about before, which is that it's a little reserved, it's a little shy, it's mm-hmm. a little scared to make a statement because yeah. people, whether you want them to or not, look at you and they judge you by what you're wearing or the choices that you've made, um, how you look. Um, and I... That has always scared me. And I think at a certain point, I was so scared of that, I just said, you know what? I'm not going to play. Mm. I'm not going to play the game. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dress very simply. I don't even want you to notice I'm wearing clothes yeah. other than the fact that I'm not naked. Yeah. Um, and, and that'll be my way of kind of avoiding the issue. Mm. Um, but what it has led to is while I look fine, I don't, I don't feel very... Like, I don't feel like I have very much identity in my, just like, everyday look. And mm-hmm. um, and I, if I change it up even a little bit, I feel like it's too much. Or, you know, like, my tolerance level is, yeah. has really mm-hmm. tightened, you know? There's yeah. a very thin spectrum where I feel comfortable. And even just putting on a heel, suddenly I'm like, oh, that's too much. Or or a necklace, I go, oh, you know, now what is that saying? You yeah. Know? And I get very nervous. Um so, you know, it's been it's been an interesting journey talking about it with you and having you help me broaden my horizons a little bit. So then when we talked about the other aspects, because I'm much more capable of stepping outside of myself um, when it's for a role. Right. Um, because no one's going to judge you. They're going to judge the part, the character. Mm-hmm. And you're like, great, judge the character all you want. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, as long as that, you know, that doesn't rub off on who I am, then we're great. Um, so it's 
it's it's much easier to play in that arena because mm-hmm. there's a safety net. There's no consequences. Yeah. Uh, so you know, we talked about kind of rather than going strictly with like characters that I like, if we could make it more personal and say like, what are the aspects of of my personality that I wish I played with more and let out and celebrated not just in my actions every day, but literally in how I look and yeah. how I present myself. Um, so the first look was, we called it whimsical, yes. which is our way of saying 11 year old Deb. <laughs> yes, and it was so exciting because I was nervous. I was like, oh, what 11 year old Deb. You sent me some photos. I sent some photos. She sent some things. inspo yeah. and I was like, okay, I can kind of see what she's going for. But it was like, what's the adult version of 11 yeah. year old Deb? <laughs> well, the thought was like when you go in your mom's closet or your dad's closet and you take out their clothes and you put, you know, you put your tutu on with her shawl and his work boots and a tie around your head and like, you like, you do do the layer thing. Yes. You layer up like crazy and you don't care whether colors go together or not. And it's just like, like I think I was telling you the story about I had, I had like a petticoat that was bright pink and then I had a blue like circle skirt. So I would put the circle skirt on top of the pink petticoat yep. and then like dance around to damn Yankees or something like that, <laughs> kicking my legs so I could see both see the, the colors. Yes. Um, or Carousel, you know, like they were always in Broadway musicals, they always had the multicolored things. And that was such a fun, like, again, pure dance like no one is looking yes. moment of my life. And I was like, let's let's do that. Let's do layers and colors and, and poof. And, and you know, I, I, I think you got it just right. I mean, um, I think it was super fun for me because it was like, you know, I knew... Every time we shopped or mm-hmm. were together, you're just like, oh, I just really like that vintage vibe. Yeah. I really like retro, blah, blah, blah. And I mean, I looked at your Pinterest boards and it was like a 40s, 50s silhouettes all over the place. I have like literally like patterns, like McCall exactly. patterns. Exactly, legitimately of, had McCall patterns vintage, on there. Vintage patterns because I was like, someday I'll you're make You're like, this. I think this is something that I will wear. And it's, <laughs> but that's the beauty of today is yeah. like, it is, you can very much like subscribe to the, you know, okay, I'm going to wear jeans and a t-shirt <laughs> every day, like whatever, simple dress. But like, there's something that's so playful mm. about the opportunity to do kind of a modern twist to a vintage thing. Right. Because at least it marries the world and you're not literally in costume walking right. out. Like, <laughs> I am now a lady of the 40s. Right. <laughs> you know? Yeah, trying to take some of the, the silhouettes and the cool details from that yeah. period and then give it you know, let it, so you don't get, you might, people might look at you twice, but not three times, you know, kind right. of thing. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I think that's the thing about, um, the misconception of people thinking about actors, mm. like about like, okay, yes, well, if you're an actor, then you can definitely model in these photos and you'll mm. feel com- comfortable. I mean, no, I'm not a model. Right. So share with me your way of getting into that whimsical character, because I, there was a little bit of like, a. Mm, a little hesitation. A little yeah. hesitation at first. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I, I mean, it, you know, it was a group of new people, and I knew you, um, but I, you know, I was, I was trying to figure out. It was like, is it okay for me to be this part of myself and and access that? Um, you gave me a teacup that was really helpful. <laughs> I know because she loves tea. I, I mean, we're having tea, tea right now. When it gave it, it gave it a. It gave it a story direction. It yeah. gave me, oh, this is Ladies Who Lunch. I'm an 11-year-old girl pretending that I am a 24-year-old girl who's going out to lunch with her best friends. Aww. And she's getting high tea, and she put on her fanciest attire. You know, like it gave me a little story to tell myself. Well, and that's that so helped. funny that you say that because we never talked, we never actually discussed no. like what happened, but I could see that moment <laughs> when I gave you the teacup, yeah. that switch went off where you were just like, and now I have ah, arrived. Context. Yes. <laughs> this is what I'm doing. I think that's why modeling is sort of scary, at least for me and maybe other actors, is because it seems like it's out of context. I'm sure good mm-hmm. models mm-hmm. know how to give it context and know how to do that. But like me in a swimsuit on a beach for Sports Illustrated or something like that, I'm like, but why? Great. <laughs> You're why like, am I kneeling I, here I in the understand. sand? With, you know, like this, the sand is itchy. I would yeah. stand up. You know, like, so it's hard for me, it's hard for me to, to really get comfortable in situations that I would probably misattribute as model situations. Right. Um, but as soon as I get contacts and I get a bit of story, it's like, oh, well now I can attach it to something. Um, so probably real models just can do that. 
They, well, they know how to But that's give the it thing. It's like people just assume yeah. acting and modeling can be they synonymous. Go hand in hand, yeah. They go hand in hand in mm-hmm. a way, but you're accessing different emotional points at, in different ways, sure. it sounds like. Sure. So, I mean, yes, once you were in it, I was like, whoa, go to this, this is so fun. She was like kicking her heels up. Like it was. It was divine. Right. I really, really loved it. And yeah, then I watched you again morph right. into the other personality. So our other personality, which we went with, which was definitely like strong vintage. Um, so I do, I do love kind of that mid-century look, um, and some of the um, some of the drama mm. that you could have. Then it doesn't feel like in this day and age we can really, you know, we we really. Um, we love things like a no makeup makeup or like those kinds of things. And I am the first person to jump on that board. I never wear makeup. I lo- I've obviously I dress in jeans and t-shirts. I'm very much like love the down to earth authentic self thing. Yes. But it has it has taken a little bit of the fun out of like really of glamour. Mm. Um, and I you know I mi- I miss that a little bit. And I think when I was a kid, you know, playing around in my bedroom playing dress up. You know, I would listen to someone like Ella Fitzgerald or Billie Holiday or, you know, and I would hear these, this incredible, soulful, um, sort of a, really a glamorous sound. And there's those incredible images of those women with the light coming down on them and, and the their camellia and the their hair and the oh, microphone. And yes. it's so strong. And, um, you know, there was just a sense of like, I want to channel that strength. So, yeah, just wanting to kind of... Uh, Put on something elegant and glamorous, and we had Alex with that incredible hair. That I know, oh my gosh, sweep to it, and um, you know, and 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 really kind of try to try to find that same strength and sense of sense of self confident glamour. Yeah, but I can be glamorous without trying to say I'm. I think I'm pretty, or I think I'm this, or, you know, like, I, I wouldn't want someone to look at a picture like that and, and say, oh, she thinks she's all that. Mm. And that's a little bit of the fear with some of those looks and, and sort of really to own it and say, it's okay for an hour on a Sunday afternoon to feel beautiful. I mean, for you, though, like, after having that experience, do you think you'll want to be more playful with your clothes, or are you still kind of like, mm, I'm scared? That that gave me full permission to be these other right. parts of me, but I'm still dot dot dot. I mean, it's, it'll be an ongoing um, journey for me. I don't know that I'll ever fully get there. <laughs> um, I, I think I think I'm always going to need some kind of uniform, you know, base outfit <laughs> yeah. um, so that I, I don't stress about it. Yeah. Um, but I think there's a, there's a world in which I could introduce elements that maybe evoke these other things that make me excited mm-hmm. um, that wouldn't feel too, hey, look at me, look at me, look at me. Yeah. Um, but that if you did look at me, you might go, oh, that's an interesting vintage shoe choice or, yeah. you know, whatever it is. Um, but it's still pretty subtle. I think so. I, I don't see myself ever being able to like walk out in the street in like lots of layers and different colors and all. <laughs> oh my God, Deb, challenge accepted. <laughs> challenge accepted. I, I don't think I will ever be, ever be brave enough. I know. Well, I mean, it, I think that's the thing is also just like fundamentally accepting who you are, where yeah. you are, right? I th- also, a, bi- a big message I want to send in the world is that I'm approachable. Yeah, and sometimes extra outfit can can seem a little bit unapproachable. So right. it, the the main important first thing for me would be that this is someone who you could ask for directions on the street. You know, <laughs> people you always did. ask me for directions, and I love it. I love that I'm that kind of person that they're like, oh, this person will help me. And even after go, I have to go. Oh no, I don't. I don't know. <laughs> but I'm so. <laughs> I'm so honored you're that you asked so me. You're so grateful that you asked me I'm so for grateful directions. that I look, I look like someone who you can ask for directions. But I think that's why I love um, having this podcast now because everybody's always like, oh, you're a stylist. Like, <laughs> you must be obsessed with clothes and right. all these things. And it's like, well, I actually gravitate towards the people who are not. <laughs> <laughs> and I really want to know why. Right. And it's like... It's actually, you know, I think a lot of people end up using their clothes as like a mask or Mm. something 
to or shield, right. honestly. Right. To be like, yes, don't talk to me right now. I am this person, right? right? right, right. Because in a lot of ways, I feel like there is a sense of um, there's no privacy for you for you guys, you know. For people in the public eye. Yeah, totally. Like, and it depends so, how you use it. I've done pretty, I think I've done pretty well at, at balancing what feels private and what feels public. Yeah. Um, Partially because you don't have to share all of yourself no. <laughs> all of the time. Oh my gosh, in the world of Instagram, yeah. I don't think that that is, make, makes sense for people. <laughs> yeah, you really don't have to. What um, do you mean we don't have to overshare? <laughs> it's confusing. So you can keep things to yourself. Your numbers will be lower. <laughs> and if you, can, if you can be okay with that, then you don't have to. Uh, yeah, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't struggle too much with that. Um, especially because I, I made a very strong decision to like step away from people's conversations about me in the internet verse. Yeah. Um, that I, I don't read reviews. I don't look at comments. I don't even watch my work, uh, anymore for many, very long time now. Um, it, it was just, it's just, I'm a, I'm a happier, better performer yeah. when I kind of pretend it's over when I leave at the end of a shoot day. Um, kind of so like you would as like a, as a theater. theater. Yeah. yeah, which is in where theater. I came from, and so that makes sense to me. Right. Um, so, yeah, so I, I, I don't feel too, like my privacy is too invaded because I'm not going looking for people who mm. are invading my privacy. Yeah, and true. Making judgments about me that they have no idea. That makes sense. Uh, so that's helpful. So <laughs> then would you, what would you say to, you know, when the younger audience who's uh-huh. listening to this who might be aspiring actors and actresses, mm. like what a piece of advice would you give to them? Oh, boy. I know. This is a hard one. It's always hard. Why everyone asks it? So I feel like I like I should like sit home at home one day and like spend an hour <laughs> and come up with a really great, solid answer to that because you get asked that question a lot. Yeah. You, I really want to do it justice. Um, all right. A piece of advice. Well, I mean, I think a huge part of it is the pressure, sure. right? Sure. Well, I mean, I, I, I guess I would say, and this is true in the work as well as in your life, is that you and your opinions matter. So a lot of times when it's starting out, it's easy to go, oh my God, like, yes, I will take any part. I'll come up any day. I'll, you know, and, and you kind of take your own feelings out of it and you do whatever has to be done for the other person. Um, and yes, to a certain extent, you should be available and open and things, but like, <laughs> if you're if you're going home because your mom is sick or something like that, yeah. don't cancel your flight for an audition. Mm. Like, d- do what in your heart feels like the the right thing to do for you. That your needs matter as much as the needs of the production. And um, you know, I say that coming from a position of the kind of person who might change their flight despite their sick mother for an audition. Right, so right. if you're an egomaniac, don't listen to me. Um, <laughs> But if you're like most people yeah. and you want this yeah. and, and you're you're a good person, uh, don't don't forget yourself. You know, keep yeah. keep keep yourself in the in the mix and, and it's okay um, to to voice your own your own needs within it. I think that's one of the biggest things that even I learned. And I just remember at the time, I think I was working with uh, Clint Eastwood's production company, but I just knew that I was like I don't want to get fired. Yeah. That was like the fundamental thing. Yeah. It was like, I don't want to get fired. I'm scared. And I made some choices that I regret. Yeah. Like I missed a, f- a family funeral in Thailand because yeah. I was like, I don't want to get fired. Like I think about that now as an yeah. adult and I'm like, holy crap, June, what the hell I were know. you doing? I like, know. but we, I, we put ourselves last so easily. We do. Some of us. We do. I mean, yeah, I feel <laughs> Again, like, if yeah. you're an ego man. I know. <laughs> Don't listen to this Irrelevant. 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 <laughs> but yes, I yeah. think it's it's true. It's very, it's it had to happen though because I think now healthy boundaries are very important to me and mm-hmm. I'm just like, no, I would never do that. But in the beginning of your career, yeah. I think a lot of times like your priorities become so muddled up because yeah. you, you have this dream, you have this like chutzpah and you yeah. really just want to do it and it's all from heart. But then it's like there's a certain point where you lose yourself a little bit and then you kind of have to come back but that's very normal yeah it's very normal so yeah it's it, i think everyone goes through it but you know you just yeah keep keep your keep yourself in the mix you know especially with young women there's pressures to do nudity or not do nudity and, right you yeah know, you make those decisions based on what you think 
they want rather than how you actually feel about it. So whichever side of that you know, uh, decision you fall is perfectly acceptable. Just make sure it's your choice. Right. Um, I mean, have you turned down roles that have been like nudity based? For me, I have. Uh, I made a decision pretty early on that with the internet <laughs> mm. and the way that our image no longer is mine yeah. once it's out there, yeah. um, that I wasn't comfortable showing anything more than a skimpy bathing suit. Yeah. So perfectly happy to be naked, to do, I don't, women don't wear bras when they have sex generally. So like right. I'm comfortable with all that. <laughs> right. But the fact is with very little tweaking, you can shoot that artistically. Absolutely. You know? um, and it, it just allows me to feel like I'm not going to end up with a CGI morphed thing in this particular zone. And people do that anyways. True. Um, True. But at least it's it's not my body, you know? Yeah, because I think the creative license too, right? Yeah. When you're doing a role, it's like, oh, wow, yeah, I've, I've done it, and mm -hmm. now everybody else takes over. Yeah, everybody else takes over. And you, you don't you don't get a lot of say after that. And, and again, some women are perfectly comfortable with that, and they are very, feel very free with their bodies, and this is in no way a judgment of that. Um, it's a judgment of choice. Yeah. And that you should not, you should, if the industry makes you feel like you either will or won't be able to keep your job or get a job because you make that, then whether you make that choice, then that's not the job for you. Mm, yes. If they're pressuring you to do it, yes. you don't want to work with them. Right. So, and, and sometimes it's this role requires nudity, in which case I know I'm not the right actor for them. Someone else is. And that, you know, and that's them saying very clearly, this is something that this role requires. And so I knew to, to step back. Um, and that was for a particularly, <laughs> particularly cool project. Yeah. Um, but I knew that it wasn't for me and, and that I would be wasting their time um, if that was important to them. So yeah, it, it, the, you know, those are, those are tough choices and that, that's an extreme example of what we're talking about. I'm also talking about, you know, <laughs> more everyday <laughs> things. Totally. You know? Well, I mean, um, I, I think that's, it comes with time as well, I'm assuming, with sure, the clarity of like who you are and mm -hmm. you're like, mm, I dabble with that thought before and but now it's like a definite no or something like that you know that stuff yeah. has come over time and like, you know and I might I might change my mind you know who knows down the line um you know but but yeah I, it's it's sometimes it's hard to know when things are our decisions versus pressure from someone else that's true <laughs> that's yeah. a very hard thing to discern sometimes so you know spend some time with yourself <laughs> I love this. And think about how, how, you know, you in five years might feel or you five years ago might feel. Yeah. Or, yeah. This is exactly why I love these conversations <laughs> and why it's even called Soulful Style is yeah. because I feel like everybody has a different style of living their lives as mm -hmm. well. And a huge part of it is tapping into your soul and understanding like, okay, what, what is my voice? Mm -hmm. Like, why do I choose what I do? And really connecting to those parts by yourself. Yeah. 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 So, but it's good. We should, we should spend time with ourselves and honor ourselves as long as we're not egomaniacs. <laughs> we want I, to I send really a want distinct to put that, message to the that narcissist disclaimer. and the egomaniacs. <laughs> there are people out there <laughs> who have no problems with this. I know. You know, I And should I not feel get like... more so in right. that direction. <laughs> Warning to the egomaniacs, yeah. this message does, is not yes. relevant to you. You stay on your track. Stay You're, on your track. You are you. Are you. you, are, you are you. So, okay, on our last bit, uh -huh. I would love to talk about your your favorite tea and why. <gasps> I know. I know. June, you know me so well. I know. All right. We got to do it. We're sipping so, tea now. This, uh, this may be, I don't know. I, I shouldn't worry about people judging me, right? No. 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 I, this is me. It's so a judgment-free zone here. Tea is an extremely important part of my life. I drink four or five cups of it every day. <laughs> no joke. Um, it is it is my comfort and my, you know, some people love coffee or alcohol even. I don't drink alcohol or coffee. It's tea. Yeah. Um, so I, there's a brand called Kusmi. I'm not endorsed. I've, oh, I they've given I've me no money. Yeah. Um, it's an international brand. I believe it's a Parisian brand, maybe. Okay. Um, but I love Russian teas because they're very strong, dark oh, black teas. Right. Um, so they sell a blend called Prince Vladimir. Okay. <laughs> so it's a Parisian uh -huh. company selling a Russian tea, which is essentially like a really hearty Earl Grey. Okay. So if I can't get that, I'll get an Earl Grey. But it's very hearty. It's very strong. 
Um, and then I put a little bit of cream and sugar or half and half and sugar. Um, and that is, that is my like go-to cup of tea. I'll make a big pot of that in the morning and drink like two hot cups and then I'll, I'll pour it over ice for lunch. And then even at night, I don't have like a caffeine thing. Yeah. So it doesn't bother me at night. Like I had, I had a cup of my Prince Vladimir tea like at 11 <laughs> p.m. last night and was asleep by 12. So it was okay. <laughs> I mean, I feel like I need to try it now. It's a very I good tea. I, 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 I have it. Like you just have to come over and have yeah. some tea. Okay, so I'll come over and have you some tea. You actually probably have had it and Wait, just what? don't know it. <laughs> For real? If you've had tea did at my slip, house, did you slip me some Prince Val- Vladimir without I mean, me knowing? If you've ever had tea at my house, that's the tea I make. So oh. you've probably had it. Okay, I might have <laughs> had it then. Well, okay, so my go-to is usually mm-hmm. matcha okay. tea these days, and I introduced my dad to it, mm. and now he's obsessed. Okay. And Jace has like a little matcha's... bamboo whisk Ooh, thing. Wow, that's he's, he's like very into it. He's so you know he gets into things. <laughs> Very yeah. intensely. So matcha is a, t- a strong flavor too. I'm it is. Well, la- a late in life. You know what? This is the thing. It's like I feel like the real matcha, yeah. like ceremonial, like grade yeah. stuff, is so earthy. Yeah. That it's equivalent to like black coffee raw to me. Uh-huh. That I can't have that. Okay. So I'm the pansy version matcha of a matcha. Light. Yes, okay. of a matcha drinker. <laughs> and so, as am I with coffee as well, where it's like mostly sugars and milks Yay! and then a splash Kids of coffee. the other things. <laughs> so, I will say now, I love a mocha frap. <laughs> I gotta Do say. Do you really? Oh my God. It tastes nothing like never coffee. I guess that. It's like a slushy. It's like a chocolate slushy with a little bit of adult flavor in there. Okay. <laughs> like a little bit of like coffee. I'm not a child to remind me that I'm 34. Um, but yeah, I, everyone puts them down. I am all about it in summer. I order it without any, well, no, I worry about being judged, but I'd order it anyways. No, don't worry about being judged. You do you. <laughs> this is the universal message of this podcast episode. Yeah, you do you. You do you. Accept all of the <laughs> drinks that you drink and own it. And own it. Alrighty. Well, thank you so much, Deb. Thanks for talking with me. This is really fun. I, I had a blast. It did not even feel like a podcast. I think you should totally go have some mocha frappuccinos. Let's <laughs> go get some mocha fraps. Mocha frappuccino. Oh. All right, guys. Have a good Bye. one. Bye. Thank you for listening. So if you like what you just heard, please, please, please hit the subscribe button below and click on the bell icon so we can notify you whenever we have some new contents for you. So anyway, thank you so much again for tuning in and see you next time.